and our second panel session on an extremely crucial subject and an equally exciting topic, Zero Trust Security, Rethinking Cybersecurity in Changing Environments. And before I call on stage the honorable panel members who are going to enrich us in this session, few points of discussion I would like to highlight in front of you. How does Zero Trust Security work? Zero Trust in revolutionizing network security architecture. How a Zero Trust strategy can help you achieve your tactical and operational goals and many more. So without waiting for the time, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the honorable panel members for this panel session. In the order of the sequence, joining us first, Mr. Bhagavati Prasad Dube, CISO from Access Asset Management Company. A big round of applause for Mr. Bhagavati. Welcome on stage. Please have your seats. Joining next, we have Mr. Balram Chaudhary, CISO from Ask Investment Managers Limited. A big round of applause for Balramji. Balramji, welcome to the stage. Please have your seat. Joining next, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Jaswan Saini, Lieutenant Commander, Indian Navy. A big round of applause to Jaswanji. Welcome to the panel, sir. Please have your seat. Joining next, we have Mr. Vishal Nagaria, CTO from NAPA. A big round of applause to Vishalji. Vishalji, welcome to the stage. Please have your seat. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call on stage our honorable moderator for this panel, Mr. Devi Das Shantaram Golab, CISO from TJSB Bank. A big round of applause to Devi Dasji. Devi Dasji, welcome to the panel. Please have your seat. So, gentlemen, looking forward to a great session from all of you on such an exciting subject. And Devi Dasji, all over to you for that uh, moderation and looking forward to a great session. Thank you. Yeah, hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, so most of you must be aware of uh, the terminology that is in trend, uh, that is in use, uh, Zero Trust Architecture, or Zero Trust Network Architecture, JPNA, or Zero Trust Security. Uh, so it is not new term, it is already in use, it is adopted by the big giants, uh, organization like technology firms from the US in Silicon Valley. Uh, in India also, uh, in bits and pieces it is adopted. Uh, but nowadays there are few vendors, few product companies, they are offering that. We'll pick all, uh, we'll switch all your uh, security product, all your security related uh, uh, controls together and we'll offer you a zero trust as a service, as an overall uh, strategy or solution. So we have a very uh, expert panel today. Uh, let's understand from them what is Zero Trust, what is Zero Trust, how organization can uh, go and deploy uh, the Zero Trust. So my first question is to Mr. Ram. Uh, in your viewpoint, what is Zero Trust security? How it works? Uh, how to go about it when any organization, any CIO, CISO want to uh, go for Zero Trust? Uh, yeah, all people. Am I available? Yes. Uh, good afternoon to all. Myself, Balram Chaudhary, I work for SK Investment Analysis Limited. So, what is Zero Trust? Zero Trust means trust but authenticate it before allowing anybody to enter in your house, enter in your network, enter to access your digital penetration. So, Zero Trust network architectures, no one can provide it as a single rules, but this is a framework which requires multiple tools and technology to be implemented to come out from the situation where you can say this is the Zero Trust. Now the people are, apart from that people have started talking not only Zero Trust but SASE also, Secure Access Services as well. How we can create Zero Trust network architecture in the organization, it doesn't have single tools to, to the thought process. You have to work on individuals, individual digital equipment infrastructures. We are having peri perimeter-less computing environments where the early, early days there were only the perimeter firewalls was there, IPS, IDS, and you are safeguarding. No. So on the individual perspective, you should have some kind of very little tools where you can safeguard uh, starting from EDR, then uh, starting from EDR, then DLP data leakage prevention is supposed to be there. So one thing is why the people say we use uh, data leakage prevention, but on the ground reality, 50% of the implementation, the configuration is not correct. So 
how to implement this DAP? Yes, I have taken some of the tools I have installed and configures and automations, whatever the tools are going to give, we have implemented digital working. No, it will not. We require to have do the proper data flow analysis. Data flow analysis is not a day or two days things which you will do, it's required at least six to eight months to complete and then you will be able to implement those deal. Then we will come on document right management where you are sending some of the critical files to your vendors, partners who can print behalf of you like credit card, debit card or some different kind of solutions. So how to ensure that yes, trust has been agreed between us, but should, should we trust in having? No, we should not. So while we share some of the file, how we can ensure that whatever file I have shared for uh, to third party, they are going to use only for the specific time period. The specific time period, post a specific time period, it should get expired automatically. So we should not be going and auditing, hey, my data is available with I have deleted or not. This is one from the end user perspective. Then encryption come in, into the place while you are having laptop and desktop, you should encrypt your this. Now I will come on the perimeter level. Now nowadays we are living in the perimeterless environments. People have started using multi-cloud environments. So how to ensure that at the same time we should create some kind of framework and we will be to access Bob from any US scenario. We are sitting in US, my data center or my resources are available in India. I am accessing how to ensure that we are secure. Then comes some kind of zero trust network architecture, some of the tools they claim for that, but although we will not say it's 100%, I would say you have to create multiple tools and technology to ensure. So then on the perimeter side, you have to create some uh, our orchestrations framework, and then you have to use some Caspi platforms, then you have to use multiple tools and technology. So, and then still, you will find some of the challenges which I personally, technically, we found that we are not able to meet. So let us assume that you have three big uh, cloud service environments like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, and you have some NetMagic or some third-party data center which is working on the less environment. So, so one of the tools, like I will come later, so one of the tools called Cloud Security Postures Management, if you ask from everybody, see how to ensure that my infrastructure which is available in cloud is secure or not. So you have to do real-time monitoring, real-time real -time scan. Once you scan, then you will come to know what kind of vulnerability reside and how to ensure that we will remedy it. However, if you are having some different hybrid environment, the same no tools are available who can provide you some kind of guidance where you will be able to scan on the real-time basis. Two challenges which I have seen, we are living in the API environment, API era, API is the economy, everybody is consuming API, we are consuming someone else is consuming my API. And now same times we, we, we prefer nowadays to lift and shift application and implement in my organization. So two challenges, API security which I have seen and then third, third, challenge, third challenges will be supply chain attack which I have seen. So uh, how the things is working, let us assume that you have taken some of the application and implemented it in an environment, which is called private cloud, even in the cloud, and now you, you, you have done some kind of BAPT, and in the PT, you find it out, which is the critical vulnerability available, and I, I, we need to pass that, and then, then your application guy is saying that, you know, I will take three to six months to come out from these patches. I don't have patches. I do not give. You know that you are wondering whether any time can be, you can get expired or what's supposed to do. Nowadays, a couple of our partner is coming, yes, they will do some kind of virtual patchy, but still there is a question here. So, in nutshell, I'll say zero trust network architecture is a framework which requires to implement multiple tools, technology, along with some of the certification body which you are following like ISO 27001 certification as a process, then NIST, PCI DSS compliant, and RBI master direction, which needs to be followed, and then you will come out from proper framework. <coughs> now, one thing I forget to tell you, so that why you create zero trust network architectures, that's called like you have jumble of servers, VMs available in your infrastructure, and, and one of the server got infected from the viruses or 
Uh, you, you know that this machine is vulnerable and it can go laterally move from one server to another server. So there is need now to ensure that, yes, if this server is, you know, that infected by any of the vulnerability, this should not laterally move. So one server cannot go and infect other server. That's for lateral movement. So this is one of the key, I'll say, on the zero trust network architectures. Thank you. Yeah, so I think uh, Mr. Balram has uh, moved from one point to another and uh, covered all the domains. So what I can pick from his discussion is uh, zero trust, though vendors are claiming there is no uh, single, uh, it is not a tool technology, it is a framework uh, where uh, there are some principles and he touch point on what is meant uh, to be ensured in the zero trust. We'll have that in the next question, but what was my key points uh, from the his elaboration was uh, is on you need to have from endpoint to perimeter to cloud to hybrid everywhere you require tools and technology and uh, strategic level you need to work on so that uh, everywhere wherever IT assets are present you will have the uh, zero trust architecture present. So my next question is to uh, Mr. Jaswinder. Uh, so like. Now we understood uh, we, what she is saying, uh, Zero Trust is not a tool or technology, uh, but it is framework or strategy. So this strategy or framework, uh, are there any principles, are there any core, uh, uh, what we can say, uh, uh, the framework pointers on which any organization need to work? Uh, can you throw some light on that? Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, my colleague has already uh, shared a lot of insight on how Zero Trust actually works. It's a very nice uh, acronym point uh, mentioning Zero Trust that uh, but however if we have to communicate, if we have to pass on data, there should be some trust which is required hence there will be no communications. So, uh, but definitely uh, if we have to turn a coin, it can't be 1% trust or 2% trust. So, Zero trust will go a better acronym, and uh, the principle which uh, zero trust work, it should be that there is no implicit trust defined. So, uh, if you have to make any communication, you have to build up the trust. You have to ensure that it has been authorized. The things have been authenticated. There is no defined implicit th uh, trust should be there. Second uh, principle which it works on uh, is the multi-factor authentication in which you have to ensure that uh, there are more factors like something you know, something you have or something you are. Uh, it's a combination of two or more than two factors so that uh, for any kind of a privileged activities, if I have, to, uh, I have to ensure that identity is true and the uh, right person is authorized for a right activity. Then it also have uh, one of the core principle as micro segmentation in which we have to ensure that any applications for which the trust has been established, it should not have any kind of lateral movement or if uh, one application has been compromised then the adversaries should not be able to uh, escalate themselves to an, any uh, any more applications and the damage and the blast radiation can be minimized. And one uh, more important feature uh, will definitely uh, will be the privilege uh, management or the privilege access management so that uh, the, uh, I mean if you have to carry out an authentic, have a authenticated job or uh, the access in which uh, higher authentication is required, it has to be uh, ensured that only uh, the privileged users or the authorized privileged users are supposed to uh, carry out those activities. Then uh, it also have an, uh, I mean have got a principle in which uh, there is least privilege is assigned. Uh, if any kind of access you are supposed to give to any user, it should be as minimal to uh, complete this activity. There should not, I mean, he should not uh, be allowed to have a higher degree of, uh, of, of privilege so that 
privilege escalation can be controlled. So these are the basic four principles I believe uh, on which zero trust uh, works. But definitely uh, you should also have a zero trust uh, mindset. That is very crucial if if any organization if we have to implement that from the scratch itself we should uh, think in a way that. The thing is compromised. Uh, I mean, uh, the attack has already happened. Now we have to ensure that it is not being escalated. It is not the blast radius is controlled. It is not uh, moving uh, so that uh, my other applications or the other services are not compromised. That is uh, what I believe uh, the main principles behind zero trust. Yeah, you covered very well. Uh, so yeah, these are the uh, principles. So main. Uh, principle you talked about is the last one. Uh, consider it's uh, already breach. Uh, then uh, always uh, challenge everyone. Always verify. Uh, so that is why zero trust. And what what to verify and whom to verify? Not only user, uh, application, devices, network. So earlier what used to be uh, like uh, the security architecture was uh, the trusted zone and not trusted zone. So everything that is inside is by default trusted. So you said uh, it should be implicit denied. Uh, earlier what used to be, uh, uh, for a trusted zone it was implicit allowed. If I am in your network, I am the employee, I should get access to all uh, your IT access, uh, IT assets and application. But zero does challenge that and uh, that is why segmentation concept come in. Uh, and in that also, zero does talk about the micro segmentation. So, what used to happen earlier is for any application, uh, it was like web, app, database. Uh, but now uh, uh, zero trust also challenge that. So uh, what used to be in between these uh, tiers, there would be a firewall or there would be any security controls. Uh, but zero trust also talk about what if attacker is coming inside. So that is why always treat that it is breach, right? It is a delay. Uh, or made it, whatever uh, we call. Uh, so treat that way and always ensure that you are challenging each and every time. Suppose uh, though you are inside a user, you have connected once to the critical application, but it is not the implicit, you will be lifetime there. Uh, maybe uh, you touched upon the time also. So uh, upon time, upon uh, validity expiry, you should also verify. Yeah, right? All the data points, including uh, the location, including uh, the behavior in which a user normally performs this activity, all things should be covered in that, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so as now we know the uh, principles, uh, and we know that it is not a uh, tool and technology. Uh, so my next question to Mr. Bhagavad is that, uh, suppose now as a CIO or CISO, we want to adopt uh, a zero trust. Uh, so where they should start, what are the strategy consideration? Whether there is any ready-made framework available from where they can start? And uh, what are the practical preparation they need to do? Uh, throw some light on that. Yeah, hi. Uh, like the ready-made framework is there. The NIST framework uh, has a detailed explanation of how you have to implement zero trust. If you go detail study into it, uh, there are not many frameworks have been uh, given by a, a, like standards in uh, like organizations which are. Uh, into this, they have <coughs> released those frameworks how step by step you can do it. When you say the strategies has to be built up, I can say as um, uh, everybody who needs a framework, it's not a tool. Uh, you put one tool and so you're protecting it and it's going to protect you from the tool, it's not like that. And when I say it's a strategy or uh, you have to implement a strategy, so strategy should start from the beginning, from the policy procedures. From a human behavior, as I said, human is a as a fellow colleague said, like, it's a mindset also. You should have a mindset of the group trust. Then only you can implement it, and the strategies can be built. So it's start from the scratch. You have to like make sure your policy talks in that fashion, your integration talks in that fashion, your tools are speaking in that fashion. All tools are integrated together. Your same so your uh, orchestration, I can say, threat hitters, and as well as all tools that are connected to each other should speak and should give the real-time uh, action able to it. So more you automate your tools, the more you bring AI in that, and uh, the more it works in a real-time, that's how you have to try the other thing. If I can say, this is the implementation part of it. If 
if I say statically, you don't have to throw your own tools on the day one. You have because at present scenario, all tools are next generation tools. You can very well leverage those benefit. First, you have to recognize what each tool can give it to you and how better you can implement on it. And basically, if there is any legacy tool, plan for replacement. If uh, the tools are with the next generation tools, you can very well automate and you can make sure all tools speak to each other with respect to your defined policy procedure standards that you have, as an organization you have adopted. And even it should be very, when I say a zero trust, it's not related to an organization. All the supporting organizations that are connected to it, like your third party vendors, your uh, service providers. So when they are interacting with you, at the same time you have to make sure their policy and procedures or their standards, how you can incorporate that. And this is that you can make a flow out of it. What will happen? They will change a resource all of a day. And as per the agreement, I can change a resource. But whether then what will happen? You have to show, it will show stopper for you. You have to integrate the core policy So that's why uh, the mindset is required in that fashion, and we have to build your uh, strategies accordingly. So the key point was there is already uh, available framework from NIST 800, I think 203 something, uh, where it is elaborately written uh, on the various uh, uh, principle uh, that was mentioned by Mr. Jaswinder. How to go about it? If uh, there is uh, first principle, always verify. So NIST talks about how to verify, where to verify, what to verify. If there is a segmentation and micro segmentation, NIST talks about that also. So readily available framework is there. Uh, there is no any compliance certificate available as of now. Uh, but as Mr. Balram uh, in his uh, uh, answer to question said, uh, ISO, uh, then uh, NIST cyber security framework and all. Yeah. Yeah. So so there will be upcoming uh, uh, framework or circular to follow in detail for the zero trust. Uh, one strategy you said uh, it will start with how uh, you are collaboratively uh, connecting all in present tool. Uh, you said uh, on day one you should not go for all the tools. Whatever is present, you should first uh, stitch this, uh, those uh, uh, security control together uh, and then go for whatever gaps are there, considering whatever your policy and procedures are. Yeah. So, next question to uh, Mr. Vishal is that. Uh, uh, will zero trust require complete architecture change? Are we just uh, bringing in some uh, new changes? Uh, maybe we touched upon in the previous question to the mindset, to the technologies, to the strategies. And will the zero trust uh, be able to work on legacy system? Considering uh, in India, non-regulated entities are still working on very uh, old technologies or uh, legacy systems. Uh, the uh, organizations which have more uh, aggressive business to do with the customers, they are more hybrid. They are already on uh, either fully on cloud or uh, hybrid, uh, we can say. And still few organizations are working fully on premise, uh, considering their regulatory requirement. And all. So considering all these working environments, technology environments, and the existing network architecture, what do you think will Zero Trucks will be the big task for the CIOs and CISOs? or it is very easy to go uh, with strategy and then work on the implementation. Yeah. So, short answer, it is not an easy task. Yeah. So, uh, you know, as uh, the Z Zero Trust works on three basic principles, you know, identify the user, which is identifying the user or the device on every single transaction, you know, provide least uh, possible privilege to the user or a device and always assume breach. So basis of basis is three different principles, you know. We as an organization or CSOs or CTOs have to uh, customize the solutions or our design our architecture of our systems in such a way that we adhere to these uh, principles. Now when I say uh, adhering to these principles, you know there are different components involved. So. Uh, the guys in the panel have actually covered everything, you know. Uh, so the components like devices, you need to ensure that it's the right device who is accessing the system. It's the right user at the right time who is accessing the information. Whether he's supposed to access that information or data or the application. 
whether the application is supposed to receive, uh, you know, there are multiple applications that are integrated to each other. So, in terms of uh, the era that we are in right now, we are in a hybrid culture, hybrid environment. You know, we have different applications. Some applications are built in-house, some are ready uh, off-the-shelf applications. Uh, when we design uh, the structure, we need to ensure that, you know, uh, they fall into these pieces, you know. And how we deal with the situation or how we implement uh, these kind of solutions is, uh, again, sir mentioned correctly that uh, don't take the entire task immediately, you know. Uh, plan the vulnerable points first, identify the vulnerable points, and does that mean that uh, will it, uh, will the legacy systems, uh, will zero trust help the legacy systems? Now, it all depends on how the legacy system is designed or developed. You know? So, if the legacy system uh, helps you provide, uh, create the right roles, right uh, users, access to the users, you know, yes, we can take care of the situation. And going back, you know, uh, if I compare the previous solution, network security solution, which is, you know, just creating a VPN solution or hardware, uh, a firewall, uh, we assume that everything inside the firewall is trustable. And uh, the legacy systems were designed to work on desktop applications. You know, an example, you can say tally. Uh, just an example. Uh, now, when we design the solution in such a way that we need to uh, create the infrastructure in the right way, we uh, uh, need to ensure that the user does not have, he has with the privileges that they have been given, they don't have the right, uh, they don't have any other visibility of the organization. So, for example, an HR user, they don't have to have access to the finance systems. A finance guy that don't need to have access to the IT systems, IT infrastructure. Now this also uh, means that a concept of micro segmentation, you know, which means that if all the systems are not visible to a user, uh, you can protect your systems and uh, uh, in the right way. You know, you can avoid big disasters. So yeah, uh, in a nutshell, uh, it's not an easy task. Yes. But when you follow the guidelines, when you follow the principles, uh, yes, you can customize the solutions as per your requirement and ensure that zero trust is applied. Not and this helps you protect your organization not only against the outside uh, uh, vulnerabilities, but it also helps you protect against your inside users, inside vulnerabilities. So that's it. Thank you. Hey, you covered very well, uh, saying that it is not easy task. So I, ju I just want to add uh, uh, why it is not an easy task. Uh, because uh, uh, in not only in India, but uh, traditionally security professional uh, have uh, something platter ready, right? Uh, if they want to secure a network, they will go for firewall. If their application, they will go for web application firewall. Uh, they will consider either uh, a threat as their uh, uh, kind of starting point for a project or the regulatory compliance is a starting point for a project. If regulator says that you should uh, uh, have this, this solution in place, they will go for it. If there is any uh, threat like a uh, distributed denial of service attack, DDoS, they will go for the anti-DDoS solution. Like if there is a phishing, uh, they will go for the anti-phishing. Uh, but when we talk about uh, zero trust, it is not a, a solution centric. It is basically, uh, as uh, Mr. Sinder said, it is mindset. Uh, of the security professional and uh, on that mindset it is a strategy and framework as uh, Mr. Bhagavan and Bhagavati said. Uh, so zero trust need to work on all the domains. So as uh, Mr. Bhagavan said, uh, given an example of data leak prevention. So uh, organization do deploy the data leak prevention but they don't cover the data for analysis, they don't cover which are my critical data uh, uh, owners, which are my critical data uh, uh, assets and where this data will uh, flow uh, to and from. So zero trust need to cover not only a uh, single particular solution, but all uh, starting from endpoints. So on endpoint itself, uh, it need to cover access, it need to cover uh, uh, multi-factor authentication, uh, it need to cover the micro-segmentation. Uh, laterally, uh, as Mr. Jashwinder said, lateral to avoid lateral movement, 
micro segmentation need to be uh, there. Uh, so between the departments also, there are uh, people who don't need to have access to some critical and sensitive government. So Zero Trust talked about uh, that micro segmentation where within the VLANs also there is uh, restrictions and uh, people are not having access to it. Uh, so there are few challenges uh, like this uh, when you go, uh, go about uh, implementing Zero Trust network architecture. Uh, so first challenge is you need to work on all the domains. So skill set, uh, resource limitation, and then understanding the whole architecture, working with all the teams in the organization. So it is not only security project, right? Uh, so deploying firewall is IT and security project, but deploying zero trust uh, is the organization project. So considering these challenges, uh, from like uh, involvement need to be there from go to end employee, uh, zero trust is not an easy task. So I agree with you, but it is uh, the complex one. Mr. you want to add something? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, having this energy uh, throughout the organization for implementing zero trust will be the most difficult task, I would say. Uh, it's like uh, even a, a web I mean, there is the administrator, he manages two applications itself. But uh, when he was told that every time you have to come to a different deal and you have to go through a different route, he, he himself will not be able to take on those things. So, and if you tell uh, even the senior management that, okay, you have you're got a limited right, sometime in a kind of a, a semi-government or a government organization, you will find it very much challenging and difficult. So synergy uh, as a whole for implementing uh, zero trust is the most difficult uh, task, I would say, which I believe. implemented various tools and technology in the organizations and this is the implied due to the implied people get hacked, your data get breached, 95%. So what we supposed to do while we create a framework, we should create a framework organization by top to down approach. Until the time top to down approach is not taking place, your implied will not follow. What's supposed to be done? Just you follow, you tell your board of director, tell your CEO, this is the mail which you should move from your email box and how critical is to follow certain process while we work in the organization, which is missing everywhere. I will give you an example. So three days back, one HR guy has left. Um, uh, some had impersonated idea of uh, uh, a phone number of a CEO and they are asking, hey, where are you? Are you coming here to come? They never, they never even given a second effort to see that that number from where their uh, WhatsApp message is going, it belongs to CEO, MD, or someone else. CEO, and then also some, some, of, some of the thought they would think, CEO asked the company to call in here, ask me to message me, there was a number to leave. So we should see. So it's a recent one incident taken place in Gurgaon, uh, two crowd laws, and even uh, the girl was going to die because they have tried to do suicide. What is happens so nowadays you can see that uh, you will get some WhatsApp message, something like that, and you will earn within just you, you have to give 30 minutes time and you are going to earn, you know, uh, something like the 2000, 2500, 5000. So we are greedy in India and we like freebie. Okay, so freebie and greedy, so and if, if you access Android phone, I think 90% of the app which you are going to download will be getting free. But iOS, I think there is a restriction. So yes, I am interested. So what I supposed to do? The same just madam, you have to just like the video where I will see. What we have done? Share the video. Uh, on YouTube and injected malware in the YouTube itself. Why you go and accessing those uh, uh, injected malware, injected video, their phone got compromised. They are all data. Girlfriend, wife, friend, whatever. I cannot tell exactly which kind of data 
which had uh, which had been forced to her to go into suicide. While she was going into suicide, then their parents came to know, drop in the things, and then police came into the picture, and then police has started investigating their phone and all. They find it out their neighbor, two house neighbor, 20 years child was going and extorting the money from her and they, they were doing some kind of dhamki. If you are not going to give him, I will expose your all photographs and things. So, please, apart from tools and technology, we should, need, we should ensure that in organization and guide to the organization also that. Uh, create an environment cyber security friendly, nothing comes in free, you need to pay for something. Because someone create, they have given their time, they are given their effort to create some kind of application, why they will go and sell it free. So these kind of environments and talk to Dharma are supposed to be there. I was going to add. So I think uh, very good point. Uh, we were talking on the this side of uh, the Zero Trust from the organization. Uh, this is again, it's a part of Zero Trust because implying again everywhere the people will be there and we will provide access to their then we should tell him exactly what sh should they do and what should they do not do. So do's and don'ts should be applied even the mobile environment. Now it is all kind of applications accessible from your mobile phone. Okay. So if they are going to do something like that, you will get hacked and something will get compromised. So so how to Use safe internet, you should create some awareness program. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was coming to that point. Employees also very much uh, the critical part of Zero Trust uh, strategy of remote. Uh, because uh, attackers, uh, whatever the most of the attack happen, uh, first start with the compromise of employee, either through social engineering, phishing, or either through whatever attempt they make. Uh, and you can see the latest examples that has happened in the uh, world on the cyber uh, uh, front, cyber incident or the cyber attack uh, that has started with the employee compromise. Employees giving out the credential and employees compromised by clicking on some link that was received on email or SMS. Uh, so employee awareness, asking employee uh, that never trust anyone. Uh, you have given an example saying that CEO called CEO called and uh, that employee didn't uh, thought about that why CEO is calling me. He had yes, <laughs> yes. So transfer the risk. Uh, that is all. Uh, so uh, employee should also not trust anyone. Uh, so it is very easy to impersonate anyone from the organization. Our details are publicly available wherever we are going. We are creating our digital footprints, and the attacker or malicious users are using it. So always verify uh, from Zero Trust Security Framework is also applicable to the employees and in personal life also. Uh, so I was listening to one uh, uh, very good uh, video from IBM on Zero Trust and uh, they have given the example saying your home uh, is protected by fans, CCTV, lights, etc. But what if, if malicious or uh, fraudulent is a fraudulent guy sitting inside? So inside also need to be controlled, right? If you, you are having safe, you are having TV, you are having digital asset, IoT boxes, those also need to be protected. Your door lock uh, not going to help you anymore. So in organization also, firewall is not going to help you anymore. Uh, so the principle always verify. I think uh, uh, zero trust journey will start there. Uh, so my next question is very opposite to that. Uh, maybe whoever want to take it uh, first. Uh, so in security world, uh, there is uh, after a uh, few days, after I think uh, period of time, there is new concept, new attack happens, uh, new technology or new tactics, uh, uh, driven attack happen, targeted attack happen, and then product companies, security companies will come up with saying uh, this is solution to tackle that. And uh, my question is that whether zero trust will be everlasting solution, uh, like like previously it was called. Uh, perimeter security, then comes the defense in there, and now it is zero trust. So, so what is what is future of zero trust? I think that is my question. No, so you must be come across from the corona recently, you know, and the corona has been created. It was not a virus, and then there were a couple of, uh, you know, the vaccine which has been created. So, this is something like that I would say. So, so if, if you have some kind of you know, viruses and there is some solution under 
tomorrow we will get something, some different kind of viruses and vulnerability and then there will be the solutions. It's a take and give and we are running, you know, that uh, company, there are many companies who does this. I believe certain times I ask OEM, to do you fund hackers? I believe that they do. I'm not sure, but this is not defended. But I believe they do fund to create new viruses. And once virus has been given back to the market, then they create solutions. So this is all give and take. And, and tomorrow, today is zero trust, and then success, secure access services, which include operational efficiency, and then something else will come. And there will be some, some solution must be there. So carry on. I think uh, uh, you said zero trust, already have new uh, terminology called as SASE. Yes. And now, uh, uh, after a few years, zero trust will be no more a debate point. People will be talking about this as well. Yeah. To add on to your question that uh, whether zero trust will be trusted or not, for uh, to answer that, I don't trust zero trust. So definitely there will be something more which is coming to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because uh, the world is changing, uh, the businesses, uh, the traditional way of doing business has no more uh, there. Uh, like the small uh, uh, shopkeeper who was selling physically now has a presence on uh, various uh, brokers platforms or various online platforms where he is registered and he is selling product. So he don't need to open his uh, shutter. Uh, behind the closed door also he can do the business. Okay? Uh, online, everyone is online. Uh, so digital, uh, like the previous session, uh, the ESGS uh, uh, CTO was saying, uh, the numbers of transactions uh, have changed from what to what. Uh, so this is one of the reason uh, zero trust will be there, or zero trust will not be there, but surely there will be some replacing uh, maybe framework or technology. And uh, that is a challenge uh, to the CIOs and CISOs. Uh, we are implementing one thing, uh, the life cycle of that is not yet over, and then there is a new framework, new attack, and etc. Uh, so, next question attached to it. If this is the scenario, how to convince the board, and uh, how it is expensive for organization, whether uh, any size organization should think about zero trust, uh, what is that uh, uh, selection criteria? Who should go for zero trust? Who should not go for zero trust? And how it is expensive? Sure. No, no, it it's, doesn't matter about expensive. If someone is having cancer or sky glands, if it is available in America, so we will get fund and go to America get the things done. So why we take health insurance? So yearly we pay premium. Okay. This doesn't mean that ski for gasoline the paisa, we should go into the hospital, no, no. But still, in a year, we have not gone to the hospital, uh, hospital but still next year we will pay. We will pay the premium. Why? Something this goes wrong tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Hence, why we go into the board, there is a need of cyber security. If you have a set, if you have, now the data is a uh, capital, data is uh, your Finance, data is everything, everything available. If you would like to safeguard the data, you have to invest. You have to invest and your ROI will come only later when you are going to get hacked and then you will understand exactly what is the value of the data. So we should be going, it's a type of health concern, so you will not get ROI right now, but there is a way and means still available tools and technology who can give certain picture to the board exactly why we are investing. The number of um, the number of attack, attack which is taking place, and if if in case you have these kind of tools and those attack has not been captured then and they are out of content, and if if, if it could have been hacked, my system, what will be the implications over there, and what we lost as organizations like brand value, like data bonds. So there are many things which you can create as a PPT and convince the board. And nowadays. Especially in the BFSI segments, uh, board is listening. Exactly why we should, you know, that invest in cybersecurity. This is my opinion. Anyone want to add? Hello. Hello. Uh, like 
in the board also, either a board case or a regulatory body also, they have to break up the culture. It doesn't uh, mean what is length and breadth or size of the organization. Security is a must for everyone, from an individual level to an organization level, and based on individual capacity or organization capacity, they should implement those things. So it's not only a zero trust uh, they have to implement, they have to implement security. So any way they can achieve it, that matters a lot. Uh, just to add on to that, like uh, there are big companies who can invest more into security. They can have their own uh, zero trust setup. Uh, and uh, the way small scale industry, when they were not having a setup for their IT infrastructure, cloud came into picture and uh, the services were offered. Similarly, uh, uh, not as a whole, but definitely some component of zero trust. Uh, the product-based company can come up with a solution in which uh, zero trust can be provided as a managed services over a cloud. So that can uh, be beneficial for uh, the small-scale industries and uh, definitely, uh, for especially for whom whose budget is not that much. Definitely, uh, you cannot have. Uh, I mean, uh, any you cannot have just putting a security into picture and forgetting the core concept or the business concept. If, but yes, you have to achieve maximum. What maximum it is there, that is the, depends upon the size of the organization and they can take a call on that. You want to So, uh, it's a notion, it's in that how do we explain to the management uh, why the security solutions are required. You know, nowadays, uh, management do understand, you know, when we give the right value proposition, when we give the right ROI. So Balram sir really mentioned in the right uh, example, you know, that it's the cost of brand reputation. When you lose uh, out on security, you lose out on your reputation. Now, yes, understood, uh, there is a cost involved and there are expenses involved when you want to achieve 100% uh, zero trust as a framework. Although you don't achieve 100% zero trust, it's about governance as well, you know. However, any organization can always start small, you know, take baby steps, you know, uh, ensure security on those places wherever you can. In, at least invest in your apps in such a way that those apps provide, help you provide the right user privileges. The user is able to see the information as much as he's supposed to see. You know, those investments definitely give you the right returns in future. So, net Yes, you can always take a distance. Yeah. I will add something here, one thing which I missed to, to go and convince to the boards, there is a tool something comes to how to convert all attacks into the money. So just, you, you, if you are going to implement MDR, that's called man of detections and response where you are going to integrate all the security devices which will give some feed data exactly in all your infra, all your digital footprint, how many attacks are taking place. Those attacks should go to the tools and the tools will identify because we have, we have to put some of the details exactly what is the revenue, how many users imply are there, which kind of departments are there, which data is super critical. So we have modified those, uh, classified those data to money, to revenue. And then you put them, then they will give you some feedback. Whereas, if this attack cost how much to the organization, this attack cost how much to the organization, and there are two, three tools available in the market, take those snaps and go and sit with the side, uh, sit with the board and explain. They will understand. Yeah. Uh, so we have four minutes, so what I may is for. Uh, so if any question we can take, otherwise we'll summarize and yes, uh, yes. we'll just... Uh, Thank you, uh, honorable panel members. Now we open the house for the questions. Yes, sir. Good afternoon and very good presentation on Zero Trust, which is a buzzword in the security industry. But I just want, I was quite, uh, and I'm quite, want to understand why was the panel having a view that and do I do understand that the facts come and go? So then the buzzword will come and the buzzword will stop, something else will come. But the zero trust is actually a philosophy that 
you don't build or you don't trust, you say that whatever comes in, he will have to verify himself all the time. And I am not going to, to give you like when you enter into a house, you don't give him the house key to all the rooms, you give him only one key. And whenever he goes there, the key has to verify himself that I am the owner of the house. So it's a philosophy which is very useful for the, uh, in fact it's a, it's, a, it's a boon to the CISO because now it's so logical. That when you tell to the board that I want to imp implement zero trust and I want this amount of investment, the board seems e is quite e inclined because it goes in their brain. Now, it's a logical point we buy so let's do this because this is one of the things we have to do in an organization to trust before some other attack will come. But the zero trust concept will always remain. So, is that my understanding wrong or is it wrong? No, no, so, your yeah. understanding is quite good, sir. And I think it's first time when I have spoken, I've spoken on that. The zero trust definition is trust, trust is authentication. This will, today, yesterday also, we were doing authentication like active directory firewall and all. Today also, we are doing authentication is the way it's happening. So, authentication mechanism and the threat landscape, digital. Footprint has been changed. We are consuming multiple API. We are consuming multiple cloud environment. We are staying. So only trusting will not help. We need to implement certain things to ensure that the data got not get to get, get high. So these kind of things. But your thought process as well. Yeah. So uh, I think question now, uh, sir was uh, why you want to understand uh, whether that uh, password will change or not. Uh, in security, as I said, sir, initially it was trusted uh, zone and on trusted then perimeter, then depends in that, now zero trust. But underlying, as you correctly said, the verifying the identity will remain there. There will be some new buzzword will be coming. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. So, already came. Zero trust, zero trust, there is a yeah. front framework with the and that was happening. Yes, yeah. so which includes zero trust plus SD man plus operational efficiency and everything. Okay, so some basics will be there, uh, new terminology will come. It is just a change in terminology. But your thought will remain simple. In fact, I feel, I mean, I'm, I just want to clarify, and you have clarified it sufficient, but as far as the board is concerned, I don't think the CISO ever had it as uh, easy as, as they, they have a current time. Thanks to Corona, the CISO now, you yes. use two, three buzzwords to them, and the board said, Karo, Karo, Hame Sikhar, and... No, if CISO will be lucky, that board is having at least one technical base. Yeah, nowadays board is a lot about it, you know, so that's okay. Not just Corona, it's uh, ransomware also had a very good... Uh, yeah, yeah, for us. So there are three, four words which we see, so we can use and the fund will keep on coming to protect your community. Yeah, I think we are out of time. So to summarize uh, uh, and uh, read by sir also, so zero trust will be there. To start with, the uh, organization to start uh, whatever existing is there, to tweak them. Uh, and work on the principle of identification, authentication, multi-factor authentication, segmentation, micro-segmentation, and always verify and provide a time-based access to the privileged entities. Yeah, so thank you all for listening to us and uh, giving us this opportunity. Thank you, uh, esteemed panel. Thank you, panel members. Yeah, if we have any other question, uh, just to tell you the honorable panel members also available well after this. So any question? Okay, so we can take one in the interest of time. Uh, yeah, can you have the mic uh, quickly to the gentleman? Sir, so quickly to introduce yourself and the company yeah. from where? So, hi, I am Pratik Parmahar, I am one of the corporate partners here. So, I come from a non tech background. So, I just wanted to understand that you know that is viral on WhatsApp. So, a guy goes to an IT expert who has recently purchased a house. He asks what kind of uh, security or doors should I install at my residence? He says the one that, uh, the one with the mechanical lock and the key. He then asks him what kind of CCTV should I install? He says engage the services of your neighbors. The third way, the third he says Ki, what kind of appliances should I install? He says the one that doesn't connect to the internet. So to sum up, does this humor contain any in the IT world or the tech world? Yeah, I got uh, your question. So, the most secure system which is not connected to the internet, locked behind the doors, no one has access, physical logic, that is secure, but that way business cannot run. Same way, if you want to secure the access, if you want to see what is happening in uh, his room, 
you need to have a CCTV, you need to have IoT devices connected to the internet, then only in sitting office he can see what is happening in his house. Otherwise, uh, if uh, whatever you are describing, whatever who have, whoever has answered the, like that way, it will not work. Then uh, there is uh, the alternative is that uh, trust on the human, appoint one security guard and uh, give full authority to him to allow or disallow whatever uh, entries uh, that need to happen to the house. So if we need to do a business, like in the same way, uh, if you need to grow, uh, we need to have networking, social networking. Same way, if you need to have a business, if you need to have some visibility, uh, connectivity to the internet, all this uh, sort of architectures are very much required. So, so that that is I can uh, secret what we can secretism, or that is the answer given by uh, uh, maybe some CISO or CIO who. Uh, cannot give assurance saying that uh, whether organization is secure or not. So secure organization or secure asset is that which is not connected to the network, which is uh, locked in the physical uh, case uh, and protected by some guard. So that way, but that will not work to uh, do the business. <laughs> One organization working on that and, uh, and we have uh, armed forces working on that, not connected to internet, have all the principles given. So, there is something. Thank you. I would like to hear from the way you are very soon going to give me such a kind of insurance by giving me this product. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for this wonderful panel on security. I would now like to call on stage uh, Mr. Praveen Kumar Sengar, Global CEO from ETEC, to kindly do the honors of presenting this wonderful panel experts here. We'll start with Mr. Bhagwati Prasad Dubey from Access Asset Management Company. A big round of applause to Mr. Bhagwati for his wonderful contribution on the panel session. Next, Mr. Balram Chaudhary, CISO from Ask Investment Managers Limited. A big round of applause to Balram Ji for his wonderful contribution in the panel. Next, Mr. Jaswan Saini, Lieutenant Commander from Indian Navy. A big round of applause to Jaswan Ji for his wonderful contribution in the panel session. Next, Mr. Vishal Nagaria, CTO from NAPA. A big round of applause to Vishal for his wonderful contribution in the panel. And now, our Honorable Moderator of the panel, Mr. Devidas Shandaram Golap, CISO from TJSB Bank. A big round of applause to Devidas Ji for wonderfully moderating the panel session. Uh, dear panel members, I would request all of you to please come forward and Praveen you could also join them for a group photograph. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the panel on Zero Trust Security and a big round of applause once again to this gentleman for wonderfully conducting the session and giving you key insights.